Hi guys. Today we're going to have a look at the new version of the lens we talked about last week, and that is the Canon RF 50mm f1.8 STM. We're going to look into what it's good for, who should buy it, who shouldn't, and whether you should grab this new RF version of the lens, or stick with your older EF version and slap an adapter on. First, let's talk about the aperture and focal length. As you can tell from the name, this lens has a fixed focal length of 50mm, and the aperture opens as wide as f1.8. The benefits of a fixed focal length is that it tends to produce sharper images. On the other hand, the perk of being able to open the aperture as wide as f1.8 is that that allows in more light, thus allowing you to shoot in low light conditions. This will come in handy when you're doing that portrait photo shoot during golden hour and you're starting to run out of natural light. If you were using an 18 to 55 mm kit lens or the Canon EF75 to 300 mm lens, you'd be forced to either end the session or bump up the ISO, thus getting noisier photos. With the RF 50 mm f1.8 STM, you'll be able to keep shooting for a while longer. Also, thanks to the 7 blade circular aperture, you'll get beautiful smooth bokeh. As a quick side note, I've reviewed both the 1855mm kit lens and the 75-300mm lens on my channel, link down below, or click the card in the top right corner. And now, before moving on to this lens's size and build, it's also important to mention its minimum focusing distance, which is 0.98 feet or 11.76 inches. This is important to know, as every lens has a minimum focusing distance. In practice, what it means is that when you're trying to photograph your subject, if you're too close, the lens will struggle to focus properly. It needs a minimum distance between it and the subject in order to be able to focus properly. So now, we can jump to the size and build section. As you might be able to tell from the footage, this lens is quite compact. In fact, much like its older EF sibling, it looks like a toy on my Canon R5. The fact that it's also quite lightweight, weighing in at only 5.6 ounces or 159 grams, this only adds to the toy-like feeling of this lens. In terms of physical size, the lens measures 1.61 by 2.72 by 2.72 inches. The build quality overall is good though, especially when you examine the metal lens mount. Now, let's address why this lens and its older sibling are referred to as the Nifty 50. Simply put, 50mm is considered to be a great focal length for a wide range of applications. You can shoot portraits with it, you can do product photography if you want, you can capture animals in the wild if they're not too far away, and you can even use it for street photography. In fact, one of its advantages for street photography is the fact that this lens is so small. Due to its diminutive size, people will be less intimidated when they see it, as opposed to a larger lens. Also, the fact that its focal length is 50mm allows you to capture your subject from somewhat further away, so you don't have to get uncomfortably close. We've mentioned some of its other perks earlier, like the fact that you can shoot in low light, but it also has one major perk for shooting video, assuming that you're using a camera like the Canon R5 for example, which has inbuilt image stabilization. Through the use of the RF system, the camera can communicate with the camera body, and thus you can achieve up to 7 stops of shake correction. This is pretty sweet, as you wouldn't expect a lens like this to actually have image stabilization capabilities. You need to make sure that you have in-body stabilization enabled in the camera menu though. By the way, I've reviewed both the Canon R and the R5 on my channel, link down below, or click the card in the top right corner. Also, if you're interested in purchasing any of the items mentioned in this video, I have affiliate links down below, and also some very useful links to different types of tools that I use to make videos. Now, in addition to the stabilization, the SDM feature of the lens helps provide smooth and quiet autofocus during video recording, as well as when shooting photos. This is especially useful when shooting video, as it makes it less likely that unwanted mechanical lens noises will pollute your audio track. 
And now that we've covered all the great things that this lens can do, I'm going to show you some photos and videos that I've taken with it on the Canon R5. By the way, if you're finding this video to be helpful, don't forget to leave a like, as it will help with the algorithm, and other people will be able to find this video as well. And now, back to the video. In terms of control, the lens has the usual AF slash MF button on the side, and a nice control ring which allows you to manually control focus. Like most lenses, when it comes to its longevity, I'd recommend being careful with it, especially as it has no weather sealing. I'd look at potentially getting a filter for it, like I have on my Canon RF 15-35mm f2.8 LIS USM lens. And now, the conclusion. Should you buy the Canon RF 50mm f1.8 STM? As we've established earlier, this lens takes beautiful photos and videos, and its incredible versatility means that every photographer and videographer should probably have one in their bag. But, since that is the case, there is a chance you might already have the EF version of this lens, in which case you'll be wondering whether it's worth purchasing this new one. If you have a lot of EF glass already, I'd recommend you probably just get the adapter. You'll spend a little bit of money, but you'll be able to use your old lenses and you don't have to buy any new RF glass, strictly speaking. This is especially the case if you mostly just want to take photos. Alternatively, if you wish to shoot some video as well, I'd recommend getting the RF version, specifically because of the image stabilization offered in conjunction with the Canon R5. Do you have any questions? Feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you'd like to purchase any of the items I've mentioned in this video, or see how much they cost in your country, I have a link down below where you can view them. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and hit that bell. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.